After years of incremental change, there is finally some excitement around desktop CPUs. Well, the big news has been AMD's resurgence, and we will talk more about them later. We're actually going to focus today on Intel's Coffee Lake CPUs. Coffee Lake is going to be part of Intel's eighth generation line of chips. Now, Coffee Lake will probably include a new flagship gaming processor, and across the board, there's a boost in core count and, of course, a new motherboard you need to use them. Other than that, it's not all that different from Intel's last few releases, and that's actually part of what makes Coffee Lake kind of interesting. This set of chips being released now may be a final sign that technology problems have forced Intel's release schedules completely off the rails. Some context here. In 2007, Intel announced it would be following a release schedule it called TikTok. They would design a new processor, the TOC, and then they would adapt that design to a new manufacturing process, the TIC. These processes, called nodes, are a set of manufacturing standards, and they're named for the size of the transistors they produce. So when they announced TikTok, Intel had just moved to a 45 nanometer process. For comparison's sake, 45 nanometers is around the same size as some of these smaller viruses out there. Now, these numbers used to correspond to the distance between the transistors on the chip, but these days it's mostly marketing and doesn't actually really describe any physical features on a chip. However, a smaller node still usually means smaller transistors, and that means potentially a more powerful and power efficient chip. So we'll talk more about chip fabrication and nodes in the future, but for now, what you need to know is that Coffee Lake is another 14 nanometer chip, neither a tick nor a talk. Intel was able to maintain this TikTok cycle for a few years. Starting in 2006, there was a new Intel chip every 12 to 18 months, alternating a new design and then a new process. The first problems showed up in 2013 with a line of chips called Haswell. This was a TOC, a new architecture design, and it was being manufactured on Intel's 22 nanometer node. This was followed a year later by Devil's Canyon, which was a slightly redesigned Haswell, but still at 22 nanometers. And another year later, we got Broadwell on the desktop, which was the third rehash of the same Haswell design, but now on a 14 nanometer process. So something had gone off, and in 2016, Intel announced it was leaving the TikTok model, and it retroactively explained that that Broadwell hiccup was part of a new release plan with the catchy name Process Architecture Optimization. So here we are with Coffee Lake, and it is the fourth chip on that same 14 nanometer process. Plus, Katie Lake, the optimization step we'd see before a new process node, was only released for desktops this past January. It seems like the only real difference between Coffee Lake and Katie Lake, which came just before it, is that after years of restricting their mainstream platform to only four cores, the i7 Coffee Lake chips will have six cores and 12 threads. There's a slight improvement in general efficiency as well, but most of the extra speed for these chips comes from them finally giving us more cores. These six core Coffee Lake chips have actually been on the roadmap for a while, but we didn't expect to see them until sometime next year. This sudden appearance makes the whole thing feel a little bit rushed. So what's going on here? It seems clear that TikTok stalled because making transistors progressively smaller was a bigger challenge than anyone in the industry expected. In fact, some estimates from a decade ago assumed that we'd already be two generations farther ahead in this manufacturing process than we are. Features on a chip are now so tiny that some of them are less than 100 atoms wide, and at that scale, we're running into problems with fundamental physics. But what about process architecture optimization? Well, that model didn't even last for one cycle. It'll be broken with the release of Coffee Lake. So why is Intel putting out a chip now, only nine months after their last desktop release? This is only speculation, but could it be that AMD showing up this year after a five-year hiatus with a successful new chip had something to do with it? It's also worth noting that AMD's mainstream Ryzen chips have up to eight cores, and that Ryzen is also AMD's first line of chips manufactured at 14 nanometer, same as Intel's, which means for the first time in half a decade, it's not hampered by manufacturing process, and AMD can actually compete with Intel on design. So when will we see the next big improvement in CPUs? Well, It'll either take a whole new architecture or a new process node. The next one for Intel is a 10 nanometer chip called 
Cannon Lake. This was actually supposed to be out in 2016, but it's been delayed until at least the end of 2018. Now, this will probably bring some pretty big gains in either speed or power efficiency, but Cannon Lake is still going to be based on designs that are out there right now. They'll just be smaller. For real performance gains, we may have to wait until the next Intel chip, Ice Lake, which will combine 10 nanometer technology with a whole new design and architecture. So years behind schedule, perfecting the 10 nanometer process has clearly been causing problems. No desktop chips of any kind have cracked it. Even Nvidia's new Volta GPU chips were supposed to be manufactured on 10 nanometer, but in order to make a launch schedule next year, they might instead be manufactured on a small update of the existing 16 nanometer process Nvidia is currently using. If you are looking for a 10 nanometer chip, your best bet is to grab a Galaxy S8 or a new iPhone because both of their processors are based on a 10 nanometer design. And so is the Snapdragon 835, which is in most other high-end Android phones these days. You see, one area that a new process node can vastly improve is power efficiency, which is critical in a smartphone, and mobile companies have been quick to move to more advanced technologies. Again, it's worth stressing, most of the numbers around these nodes are at least 50% marketing nonsense. We are still on a path towards faster chips, and new processes can be a big part of that, but ultimately, a chip speed is a combination of a bunch of factors. The fastest chip is still the fastest chip, no matter how it's made. It's just that a new process is one way that a company can create a better product. Intel's 10 nanometer may end up being more advanced than the companies that are at 10 nanometer now, but until they can crack that barrier, we are unlikely to see a really big jump in performance on desktops. We'll take you through some of the technology around process nodes and technologies on the horizon in a later video, because after 10 nanometer, things get weird, and companies are researching processes using high energy plasma, or maybe even moving entirely away from silicon as the basis for chips. In the meantime, these manufacturing challenges clearly mean that TikTok has broken down, and process architecture optimization existed for exactly one cycle before derailing. Coffee Lake may be just an incremental improvement, but it could still take the title of best gaming CPU, and with more cores on the desktop, that's great for all of us.